All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory be to Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rukha Kudash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and their orders of great millstone in the real world. And Shalom to the hopeful elect out there listening and learning and teaching this word in all sincerity and truth. In the hopes we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And, um, you know, pretty much in this lesson, um, I just wanted to focus on, you know, something that I was meditating off the back of watching the um, the apostles um, speak at the uh, the street teaching uh, with Elder Bishop Sakuran, and um, you know they were going through something pretty spiritual, and they were talking about how, you know, pretty much how this word th that we have, you know, is really like a mystery and it's a secret. And um, it's, uh, it's the most valued treasure to ever exist or to ever, to ever be grasped by spiritual men, basically. And when I mean spiritual men, I'm talking about th those are, that are of the elect, you know, that understand the worth and the value of what we have in these last days. Because, um, you know, as you can see on the screen here, I have a, I have a still... Um, from the movie Indiana Jones. I don't know exactly which one it was. It's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. BB trap scene. And as I type this in, you know, I remember speaking with a brother, I think it was Napash, about this years ago. And we was talking about that leap of faith scene. All right, which they show you that in this BB trap scene. And this scene is called the leap of faith scene where, or I've coined it the leap of faith scene because Indiana Jones ended up calling it a leap of faith. Whereby... In order to get the treasure at the end of this, um, you know, this path that he's on in this cave, he had to go through a series of, you know, um, traps, all right, um, and obstacles that he had to overcome, which the only way he would overcome them was by putting his life on the line every step of the way, you know, and um, that kind of reminded me of what a specific scene actually reminded me of. Um, a scripture in Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, which I would like to read for you, because um, I believe it ties in perfectly, um, you know, with the nature of this lesson, um, and what you're seeing on the screen. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is Indiana Jones after he took the leap of faith, because at first he couldn't see this narrow pathway that you see on the floor in front of that he's standing on. Um, it was pretty much just like a free for all. If you didn't have, you know, if he. Um, Pretty much, if, how can I say, once he stepped on the path, it was almost like the path was illuminated for him to, you know, to see the narrow path that he was actually standing on in order for him to continue forward throughout the um, the rest of the obstacles in the cave. Now, I don't know if this was the last obstacle they had to go through, but there was one before this, and he had to actually spell out, um, in their version, the name of the Lord, which they said it was Jehovah, which we know that's bullshit. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. All right, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. All right, well, what you notice, um, even in this um, this clip here, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, booby trap scene, you know, he even said, oh man, the name of the Lord, because basically he stepped on a J first, and then as he stepped on a J, you know, he, he nearly fucking lost his life. Okay, his feet pretty much, as he stepped on a J, um, you know, he was basically, he nearly, he nearly dropped to his death. All right, and then, um, let me see if I can just, yeah, so you can see the letter M in front of him. So he, there was all these random letters that was, you know, pretty much spelled out on the ground. He had to step on each letter in sequence to spell out the name of the Lord. And they said it in this, that his name is Jehovah, which we know his name is Yahweh, okay? But even in this, he said, oh, the name of the Lord, oh, it was in, in, in Latin, it doesn't start with J, it's an I, which shows you, you know, they're even telling you in this that the letter, the letter J didn't even exist, all right, uh, until much later. You know, that's Renaissance language. The letter J didn't come about um, until the, that guy, was it John uh, Tresino, um, you know, came up with the letter J, you know? And so basically, as he went to step on the letter J, he nearly fell to his death. So he, he, got, he climbed back up and then he, he jumped on the letter I. And then, um, you know, he was able to stand on that letter, all right? Which in actuality, the name of the Lord starts with a, a Y, because we know it's Yahweh, 
okay? Yahweh, okay? So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. But the point is, you know, the name of the Lord is important. And, um, you know, we can get a scripture on that anyway. Because there's a couple of scriptures that I want to get through. But um, I'm going to go ahead and read Acts chapter 4, verse 12. All right, and, and, and you know, it really starts with a name. Just having a name of the Lord to call upon, you know, that's, um, that's a big part of the treasure in itself, all right? Because it, it's going to lead to our salvation. Because ultimately, man, there's nothing that anyone can, you know, physically grasp in this, on this side, in this kingdom, you know, that's going to get them out of the, um, the turmoil that's going to be coming upon the earth. I'm talking about the day of the Lord, you know, when the Lord is going to bring great death and destruction you know, to Babylon the Great, which is America, and various different parts of the planet, all right, as he invades this place with his holy angels to lay this man's kingdom waste. And when I say this man, I'm talking about the wicked, all right, headed by the elites of Esau, Edom, the, the, you know, the biblical Edomites, and who the Lord's going to take out when he comes back. All right, so this is, um, and in the process of that, you know, he's going to save his elect, which you can read about that in uh, Matthews 24 and, and 30 on down. Also, it says, Acts 4 and 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So, you know, even in Indiana Jones, they're, they're showing you that calling upon the name of the Lord, you know, the right way, all right? Because some people believe it's Jehovah. Some people believe, it's, believe the name of his son is, is Yeshua. And some people believe it's, come on, man. All right, but even in Indiana Jones, he said, look, in Latin, you know, it starts with I, you know. So even during the time of Yahweh Shai, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even be, you, know, you, you go around saying Jesus to Christ, people would be looking at you like you've got three heads because the letter J didn't even exist. So that alone should show you how much people are bugged out calling upon Jesus in these last days, man. Okay, and it's, the scriptures tell you that it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Yahweh, all right, which is the head tribe of the nation of Israel. Okay. Which means that he's a Hebrew Israelite and he had a Hebrew name. He has a Hebrew name, which is Yahweh Shai. Alright? And the scripture says, For there is no, no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Now within the name of Yahweh Shai comes meaning. Within his name itself is the embodiment of his salvation. Okay, that's a nomen omen, a name sign, if you will. Yahweh Shai, he, um, he saves or he is sal uh, salvation. Alright? And he's only coming back to save his elect. Okay, so let's go back to, um, you know, that still where he, um, with the leap of faith. All right, and as you can see, he's clutching his, you know, he's clutching his chest and he's, oh, leap of faith. And, he, you know, at first he couldn't see that pathway that he stepped on, but he, he goes forward. You know, he reaches forward his foot, you know, to go and step on the path. And then as he leaps forward, I don't want to play it because I don't want to get like a copyright or whatever. You know how Esau will be getting down anything to strike your video or just to hit you with a copyright, right? So I just don't want to play it. But I can put up these stills and just talk you through it, all right? And it's not even a long clip. You can watch it for yourself. It was put up four years ago, all right? But as he, as he steps forward, he actually, um, his feet, you know, hits the pathway that he couldn't see before he actually took the leap of faith. And, you know, we're all coming into them times where we're all going to have to take that leap of faith, you know, when that, especially when the hour of temptation, you know, springs up upon us. And, um, you know, we have to, um, when, they, when we're faced with, you know, either taking the chip or, um, you know, trusting in the Lord, that's a leap of faith right there. All right. But again, as he steps forward, you're going to see that pathway that he begins walking on that he couldn't see before he actually took the leap of faith. Now, that's a very narrow pathway. All right. And I, and I had to say it like that because it's going to line up with the scripture here. All right. In the second Ezra is chapter seven. All right. And I, I just wanted to start it off. I started this off with the name as well, by the way. All right, because the trial that he had gone through just before Teek taking the leap of faith was about the name of the Lord. And although he called upon the name of the Lord wrong, all right, in, um, in the movie, because, you know, Esau, man, you know, he's just a devil. OK, but even they even they pretty much, you know, um, you know, were speaking against talking, you know, calling the name of the Lord and starting it off with the letter J. So even they're putting it in their movies, man. But you see, a lot of people will put this, you know, they'll watch Indiana Jones, they watch these things for entertainment, you know, but the actual fact of the matter is the letter J didn't exist. Okay. So um, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. It says, there is also another thing, 
It says, a city is building and set upon a broad field and it's full of all good things. Okay? And that city that's building and or set upon a broad field full of all good things, that's talking about the kingdom. And you know, you know, the scripture says, at the Lord's right hand are pleasures forevermore. You see, when the Lord turns again our captivity, don't the scriptures speak about that um, in uh, Psalms 126? All right, let me see if I can get that scripture. <laughs> I think it's 100, Psalms 126, verse 1. Right, it says, When the Lord turned, Yahweh turned again the captivity of Zion, I noticed I didn't say Jehovah, okay, because that's not the name of the Lord. It's the Lord, Yahweh. All right, when he turned again the captivity of Zion, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, the name of the Father and the Son, all right, which Yahweh meaning he is, okay. We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, have done great things for them. Alright, so there's going to come a time where everyone's going to know like the name of Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. And they're going to know exactly who he done great things for. Alright, the nation of Israel. Okay, because remember this, this broad field is full of all good things. And that's when we're going to be like them that dream. All right, that's when our mouth is going to be filled with laughter. You know, uh, we're going to have new bodies, the new covenant. We're going to, you know, we're going to, we're not going to ever go off ever again. You know, we're going to be immortal. All right, because the wages of sin is death. And if we're not going to sin anymore, being perfect in the sight of the Lord, then we're going to be granted immortality. Okay, because death then gets swallowed up in victory, does it not? If the wages of sin is death. It says the entrance thereof is, so this is back to that narrow path. This is the entrance thereof is narrow. So this is a very, very narrow path that we're on. And again, you know, the elders, the apostles, they were speaking about this, this truth being like a treasure, you know, and um, it's a very, very narrow path. And that's why the scripture says, you know, um, in uh, Second Ezra 8 and 1, and he answered me saying, the most I have made this world for many, but the world to come for a few. Uh, I will tell thee a similar to Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mould whereof the earthen vessels are made. But a little duff, dust that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. You know, yeah, the, this place is decaying, man. You know, the scripture um, says that the fashion of this world passes away. You know, that's why the scripture says, lay not up your treasures on earth where free, thieves break through and steal and muff doth corrupt. You know, but lay up your treasures in heaven. So what we're doing spiritually is, is laying up our treasures in heaven you know we're investing in a spiritual bank account that we're going to be able to withdraw from when all hell breaks loose out here when we do need to take that leap of faith even if we've got to die in this truth and guess what the lord you know the scripture says the dead and the lord yahweh shai shall rise first you know <laughs> my phone had to ping it on that one that's it it says um and there be um uh, there be many created but few shall be saved few okay So that's, that's the point. The many created, but few shall be saved. All right, so let's go back to this narrow path. All right, as we can see, um, or as we saw, you know, Indiana Jones, he was on that narrow path. I seem to have lost the, um, let me just, yeah, I managed to get it back, man. Satan, Satan fucking around. Because I had it paused at the right point, you know, with the, um, this particular booby trap scene with the path being illuminated as he stepped on that, on that bridge. But the point is, it was a narrow path. Okay, like I said, I don't want to play it because I don't want to get a copyright. There you go. All right, so let me just let me just hold it on that point there. You can see he's just looking at, he's examining the narrow path. He's looking at it before he proceeds to the next um, the next phase of the obstacles. Like I said, I don't know, I can't remember if that was the last one that he had to go through, but he's observing that narrow path and how tight it is. And you can clearly see that you know, it's only set up for one man to travel on it at a time. All right, in order for him to pass the test after taking that leap of faith, man. Okay, and this is why it made me think about this scripture. All right, it says, um, back in Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 7, it says, the entrance thereof, right, is narrow. The entrance to that city that's, you know, set up on a broad field and, set and full of all good things. It says, the entrance of it, right, is narrow and set in a dangerous place to fall. You know, so this this truth that we're involved in is so dangerous. It's so the path entrance is so narrow. You know that um, 
you know, it's set on a dangerous place to fall. And as you can see, you know, um, you know, he's looking down in amazement because, you know, if you was to fall off that path, you know, you're pretty much you're done, you know. And and the truth of the matter is, for us, you know, that without being on this path, without being in this truth, man, we are like we're dead, man. The scripture says, you know, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So to fall off this path is basically certain death. Now you might be walking around in the flesh, but spiritually you're dead. You know? And that's not where we want to be, man. Getting plagued with these demons and, you know, pretty much just waiting for, um, you know, waiting for us to die. You know, um, final destination type scenarios being introduced to us. Because the scriptures speak about you falling out this truth. You know, it's like you're going to get beaten with many stripes because you're putting your Shai to an open shame. Because you partook of the heavenly gift, you know. And then you turned again to the weak and beggarly elements. And I know I'm kind of like jumping around quoting scriptures, but that's exactly what it is. It's like, um, you know, it's the greatest level of disrespect. So as you can see, he was looking down right at a dangerous place to fall. It says like, it's like as if there were fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And only one path between them both. So it's, it's almost like, you know, and, and it's funny because, you know, water and fire is being used. The, the, those two particular elements were being used on the right hand and the left hand side. And what did the Lord use to do to flood the earth? Water. And what's he going to use during the second death? Because the, the Lord flooded the earth. That was the first death. The second death is going to be by way of fire. All right. Two cleansing agents, but they're used for destruction. Okay. And so um, it says, and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city were, so you see how narrow the path is, it's so tiny and so narrow that only one person can go there at a time. You know? Let me see if I can, uh, it's such a narrow path. He's there just clutching his chest, he's breathing heavy. You know, taking deep breath, but look how narrow that pathway is, man. And imagine fire on the one side and water on the other side. You looking down and you just, that's what, when you're in this truth, that's exactly what you're involved in. You're on that narrow path, just like that. You know? And, and those of us that are spiritual, and that's why we've got to fear the Lord, you know, that, you know, that we don't um, tumble off, off, off the, the right-hand side or the left-hand side. You know, we don't tumble off the path. You know, we stay on the path, the straight and narrow path. And it's so narrow that only one man can go there at a time. Even the doorway ahead, only like, it's like, it's, it's just wide enough for one man to go through at a time. As the pathway leads to that, you know. So, um, you know, I'm just, you know, putting in a little bit of visuals, you know, just to go with the lesson. You know, because like I said, it actually inspired me to go into this scripture here. Um, it says, verse 9, if the city now were given to a man for an inheritance... If he shall never pass the danger set before it, how shall he in receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so, um, also is Israel's portion. All right, so this is this is what we've got to go through, you know? And a lot of people, they don't make the cut, you know? A lot of people can't make the cut back just because they're not of the elect. You know, you've seen um, many stories and examples of guys that have, you know, pretty much um, um, embarked on this journey, um, said that they could handle being on this narrow path, but then they fell off, man. You know, and the scripture says if they went out from us, it's because they were not of us. So it's very, very difficult. All right, and it's very, you know, we have to be moving. Like I remember Elder Puzzle Goodbye used to say, we've got to be like um, cats on a hot tin roof in this truth, you know? But the point is, you know, going through these obstacles, what's, the, what's at the end of it that, you know, um, you know, the kingdom, basically, you know, being of the elect, getting crowned by Yahweh Shai, you know, as we uh, forsake everything. The Lord said that we shall receive a hundredfold. That's what he told Peter when he was asked by Peter, we've forsaken all. All right. So this is Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. All right. The which when a man have found, he hideth. All right. So imagine like... Uh, um, you know, finding treasure in the field, you know, and um, 
the only way for you to claim that treasure is to basically sell all you have and buy that land that that treasure's on. You know? Just giving you an, an example, you know? Just giving you an example or just imagine that, I don't know, like, um, like you just found, you know, you just found so, so much like rubies and gemstones and, you know, um, um, you know uh, I don't know, gold ingots, you know, that was worth so much. You know, in, 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 in a field somewhere, you know, you do everything in your power to make sure that you, you know, the treasure that you stumbled upon, man. And you ain't going to go around telling everybody because guess what? The moment you tell anyone, someone about that, they're coming for that gold. <laughs> you know? So that's just a little example. Okay. Um, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a, unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. All right, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. All right, and this is that costly pearl, man. This truth that we have is that hidden treasure. It's that costly pearl. All right, and in order to pass, you know, get through the narrow path, in order for us to achieve, you know, the prize at the end. You know, this is about enduring the booby traps that set before us, man. And yeah, you know. We're going to say, like, even Indiana Jones, remember I told you he stepped on the letter J and he fell through the ground. So that's all you people out there, you believe that the name of the Lord starts with J. Get ready to fall through the ground, man, and fall to your doom. You know, get ready because you couldn't, you couldn't, the Lord didn't give it to you to, to call upon the name of Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. Get ready to fall through the ground when you're calling upon Jesus the Christ or Jehovah, man. All right, because that's not the name of the Lord. Remember, we just read Acts 4 and 12, which that's a part of the hidden treasure. Okay, to know the name of the Lord, to call upon his name. All right. And that's why we, you know, we get on them guys at IUIC. They want to make fun of the name and they call upon Christ, Jesus the Christ. All right. They don't push that there's only one name to call upon. They don't push that. They push that you can call him whatever you want. Here it is. They got members in their own congregations that have Hebrew names like Deacon Yahweh Sup. All right. But then guess what? The Heavenly Father and his son, they don't have Hebrew names. It says Hebrews 11 and 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So that's it. The depth of the riches, man. Both of the wisdom and the knowledge. So this wisdom and knowledge that we have is real riches. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get another one. No, that's not the one I wanted to. That's not what I wanted to. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. Just bear with me. Uh, wisdom above rubies. Is it? Uh, Job twenty-eight. Let's see if it's in Job twenty-eight. Sorry, I have my other phone with me, so I'm kind of looking it up on that. Job 28 and... Um, right, let's just read uh, Job 28 and... Um, let's start from 12. Man, this is, this is a... Damn, this is a good scripture. I ain't really come across this one before, which I may have, but I, um, I, don't, I can't say I remember it. So this is, um, the, the subheading reads, the search for wisdom is harder. And this is Job chapter 28, verse 12. It says, but where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of all fear, with the precious onyx or the sapphire, the gold or the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels or fine gold. Look at that. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, or, or for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, uh, shall, uh, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Hence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air, 
man, that is a beautiful, that's so poetic, man. I got lost in, you know, reading it verse by verse. That's beautiful, man. Barakat Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for that scripture, Job 28 and 12 and down. And I must highlight that because that was hard hitting. Um, no mention shall be, verse 18, no mention shall be made of coral or pearls. For the price of wisdom is above rubies. Look at that, man. You can't even compare it to rubies, crystal, gold, onyx. You can't compare wisdom, you know, to um, to any of these precious stones. It's far above it. All right, which that wasn't the scripture that I wanted, man. But it ended up being the scripture that exceeded what I wanted, in a sense, you know. Man, that was beautiful. So there you have it, man. There you have it, okay. The price of wisdom is is above rubies. Okay, the price of wisdom is above rubies, and that's why you know this this truth that we have, we have to hold on to it for dear life. Like the scripture says, you know, um, you know, the Lord has hid this from the wise and prudent, and re and revealed it unto unto babes. Okay, um, let me see if I can um, let me see if I can get this scripture as well. This is Luke chapter ten, verse twenty-four. For I tell you, in fact, let me start from twenty twenty-three. And he turned unto, um, turned him, and he turned him unto his disciples, and said privately, "Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them." Yeah, because this has to be given to you, man. The Holy Spirit's got to be dealing with you, all right. And then you had it even in the um, again in the New Testament, you had um, in the Book of Acts, it might have been. Well, you had that guy that tried to buy the Holy Spirit. All right. And the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning that scripture, um, because when you go back to Job 28 and 15, it says it cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. The price of what? Wisdom and understanding. Where shall wisdom be found? Verse 12, right? So um, let me see if I can get that lesson as well. I mean, get that scripture. Um and like I said, I've got my other phone um, that I'm gonna, um, you know, that I'm looking to um, to get these scriptures, you know, for for the edification purposes. It's Acts the eighth chapter and the eighteenth verse. Um, let me start from. Um, I'm gonna go straight to the point. Verse 18, and when Simon saw that through the laying on that on of the apostles hands, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money, saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay, I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, so, yeah, the point is he offered them money. OK. Which it can't be gotten. This wisdom and truth, this this knowledge can't be gotten with gold, man. It can't be bought. Remember, faith is a gift, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is a gift of Yahweh, right? Verse 20, but Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift, there he goes, that gift as the spirit of Yahweh may be purchased with money. All right? So you can't, um, you can't buy this. You can't buy the Holy Spirit, man. All right? You can't buy faith, Okay? Uh, and without faith, it is impossible to please him, especially having faith in the name, the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, as we embark on this treacherous um, path filled with traps and obstacles laid before us, man, as we walk and as we take our leaps of faith. All right. And that's when he just about took the leap of faith. You see him there looking down and imagine that's that's where we are right now. Arkim. We're on that path and the path is going to get thinner and thinner, narrower and narrower as we reach the end of these um, obstacles, you know, as we uh, approach the um, hour of temptation. So um, with that, man, I pray this was an uplifting lesson. Um, and I hope this shows how important, you know, this wisdom and knowledge is, you know, as we embark on, you know, our individual paths um, towards salvation. All right. So with that, man, I pray you were comforted with this lesson and shalom to the hopeful elect.